Hey, it's Dr. Scott Watson with a quick tip on how to get a better production in your DAW, in your digital audio workstation. The tip is simple, and that is to just include at least one, maybe two real instruments rather than using all synthesized instruments. You can really hear that in the production I'm going to share with you right now, which was written by a former student of mine, Rachel Hendrick. She wrote the clarinet part, at least, and she's playing the clarinet part, and she's a very good clarinet player, so it sounds great. Everything else is stuff that I wrote and produced around her clarinet playing. So just hearing that one clarinet that's live, real, actual acoustic instrument recorded with a microphone, and then everything else being uh, MIDI and synth, it still makes it sound pretty decent. So let's just listen to it and talk about it. Okay, so it does start very synthy with that pad. But now we hear the clarinet, right? And that kind of militaristic drum and percussion. Even though it's a virtual instrument, percussion always sounds good in virtual instruments. There's also a strum guitar, and again, pluck strings are pretty good uh, synthesized sounds. All right, doesn't that clarinet sound great? Now we're going to change instrumentation here. A little more magical. You hear the harp, the celeste. And then with the real clarinet, here's a bassoon. And then to end it, a little plucked acoustic guitar, classical guitar. And then that string pad. We kept the strings kind of in the background. But yeah, having that one clarinet just really adds to it. I did want to show you the volume automation. Let me open that up here. You can see that the one instrument where we automated volume the most was clarinet. We also broke up the clarinet audio regions uh, in order to fix some timing errors. You know, this idea of using an acoustic instrument or using a real instrument, it could be electric guitar too, but a real instrument along with all the other synthesized sounds. Um, I heard recently when I was participating in a summer composer workshop, uh, there's a composer named Tommy Tallarico, writes a lot of um, video game music, and he uh, spoke about that. Let me just play a little clip from what he shared. I know you use some orchestras sometimes, but on the lower budgets, are they mostly using synthesized sounds, MIDI Yeah, samples? yeah, samples. And one of my tricks for that, for, for folks uh, who are on a budget, um, instead of making everything just MIDI, you know, and making everything electronic and samples, my biggest trick that I would always do when I didn't have a big budget to record is that you know I, I'd use samples as much as possible, especially percussion. You can get away with with sampled percussion pretty good these days. It's really amazing. But I would hire one or two musicians, even if it's just one string player, mm -hmm. to play over top all the samples. I can't tell you what a difference that makes. Here's a DAW production of the wonderful, beautiful uh, Paul Beloche tune offering. Um, I did actually ask uh, a real vocalist to, to join and a, uh, a live guitar player, a guitar player friend of mine. So carry the vocalist and read the guitar player. And they sound great. I'm going to mute them, though, and just let you hear a little bit of the production uh, without them. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll play the melody on rock organ, which is, oh, even better. I'll play it on sax because the sax is a terrible synth sound. Uh, it sounds like Barney or like a Saturday morning cartoon. So here we go. Here's the melody. You know, some people like that sound. I think it sounds like, you know, cartoonish, very fake. Okay, so you get the idea. If you use that synth sound in this production, nobody will take the production seriously. It's just going to sound very phony. All right, but let's go back and hear the track with our vocalist, with our guitar player and um, just compare that. Okay, so the introduction, the piano is, you know, it's a, it's a good piano sample, so that grand piano sounds good. The bass and the strings in the background, the drums sound good, right? But now we're going to actually hear some strumming guitar and vocalist. The sun cannot compare to the glory of your love. So much better, right? And those guitar fills, right? Now, that cello sample isn't bad. It's like a solo cello section. In 
fact, we're going to feature that cello here. Okay, coming in the chorus, we have some background vocals. Oh, that uh, rock organ's too strong. Let's pull that back. But the strumming guitar, right? That's nice. And listen to this little guitar fill that Reed plays right here at the phrase ending, right here. Yeah. All right, you get the idea. So, so much better with just a couple real instruments. It's a much more believable sound. So how do you get a good instrumentalist to play on your track? Just give them a lead sheet. A lead sheet has the melody and the chords and pretty much a good guitarist or a good keyboard player or a good vocalist can just take it from there. You set up a tracking session, have the guitarist play from that lead sheet, whatever they feel or whatever you instruct them to play or in the style that you instruct them to play, and you have your track. I asked the vocalist and the guitarist to play on the track that you're looking at right now. It's an old gospel tune, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms of God. And all I had to do was give them the lead sheet, set up some time to record them, you know, do a little sound check, let them play around with the track, and they did the rest. In this production of the old gospel hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms of God, most of the instruments you're going to hear are software instruments. Let me give you a little bit of a tour of what's in the production. Um, I'm going to skip over the vocals and the guitar, which are real, but let's go to the, the piano track will be me. I, I recorded that in in real time uh, from a lead sheet. Right, so that's the, the piano part. Um, there's a sort of a rock organ you'll hear. The uh, bass, you know, it's just a, a MIDI bass or a software instrument bass. Right. Um, there's a nice mandolin loop I found and put that in the beginning to give it sort of a bluegrass country feel. Right. That's a pretty cool mandolin loop. Right. And then the drums is Garage Band or Logic's drummer. Right. So those are the drums you're going to hear. And um, now let's listen to some of the actual instruments like this lead vocalist, or let's go a little bit later on where we have some vocal harmony. So right here we have the harmony. It's the same singer, right, singing multiple tracks. And then uh, let's go back and check out the actual live um, electric guitar, or actually it was an acoustic guitar. Right, so put that all together, and here's what it sounds like. So let me summarize some of the main points of this video. Number one, the big takeaway is include a real instrument in your production and you'll up the production value greatly. Use the software instruments that you do use judiciously. Feature the strengths. I always say put your best foot forward and hide your warts. Hiding your warts means don't use those synthy sounding saxes or any instrument that's going to sound phony. Also, one thing I did mention is to play the instruments that you are using idiomatically. So when I played in the bass part, I played it like a bass player would play. Dom, 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 dom. So I'm imagining how a bass player would play it, even though I played it in on keyboard. I tried to play it idiomatically. That's, that's pretty important too. So you do all those things. You use the software instruments that are good sounding. You play them in idiomatically. Don't use the ones that sound bad or you hide them in the background and you get one or two really good uh, live instruments in your mix and your production value is gonna increase exponentially.